Hi guys, welcome back to LearnBiology.net. I'm Frankie, and in this revision session, we're going to take a look at genetic fingerprinting, also known as DNA profiling. And your learning outcomes this lesson are Number one, know that an organism's genome is mostly non-coding. Number two, understand that repetitive nucleotide sequences, VNTRs, vary in number and occur at different locations within an individual's genome. And number three, evaluate the applications of VNTRs. You may well know that an organism's genome is all the genes contained in a single set of chromosomes. Or put another way, the complete genetic information in an organism. You may also recall that not all of an organism's genome codes for proteins, i.e. most of the genome is actually non coding. Nowadays, there is great interest in understanding the genomes of not just our own species, but of all different species. And the study of sequencing, investigating, and comparing whole genomes is a branch of biology known as genomics. It is as a result of genomic sequencing projects, such as the Human Genome Project, that repetitive sequences of genes were noticed and identified. One such repetitive sequence is known as a variable number tandem repeat, a VNTR, which are also called mini satellite sequences and sometimes are generally referred to as restriction fragment length polymorphisms. VNTRs are a repeating sequence of nucleotides that vary in number between individuals. You may remember that your chromosomes are homologous. You inherit one from your mother and one from your father to give you a homologous pair. If we have a look at a small section of DNA from two individuals, one male and one female, we can see how these VNTRs can prove useful. So here we have individual one, a male and here are his homologous chromosomes. The pink chromosome represents his maternal chromosome, which he inherited from his mother, and in dark blue we have the chromosome inherited from his father. Together they form the homologous pair. The region of DNA that we are interested in is indicated by the coloured section of base pairs. This is the loci, the position of the VNTRs that we are going to analyse. As we can see, the section of interest consists of a repeating pattern of bases. Read in the 5 to 3 direction, we have AC, 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 and AC on his maternal chromosome. And we have AC, 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 AC on his paternal chromosome. So we can see right away, despite being at the same loci, the number of AC repeats is different. Remember, they are alleles. So we have five AC repeats on his maternal chromosome and four AC repeats on his paternal chromosome. This VNTR locus varies between the chromosomes he's inherited. Remember that that mutations and other factors can cause variations too. Now, if we take a look at individual B, the female, we can see that on the same chromosome, at the same loci, her maternal chromosome has a VNTR composed of six repeats. We have AC, 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 and AC. Whereas the chromosome inherited from her father has seven repeats. So this is where the name variable number comes from. The fact that these non-coding regions are highly variable in the population. The range of variability is typically between 4 and 40 repeats between different individuals. The tandem repeats part of the name is due to the bases always repeating adjacent to one another, i.e. in tandem, for the length of that particular loci on the specific allele or section of DNA. For example, GC, 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 or AGCT, AGCT, AGCT. Okay, so let's get back to our male and female sections of DNA. What we must do next is run these sections of interest through our polyacrylamide gel by means of electrophoresis, which will allow us to visualise the banding patterns and compare their DNA. We'll talk more about electrophoresis in another lesson, but for now, the aim here is to show the bands of DNA based upon the number of the VNTRs from each individual. So, as we can see here, the smaller VNTR, having only four repeats, migrates quicker and further down the gel. His larger VNTR, with five repeats, doesn't travel quite so so far. The same principle applies now to individual B, and her VNTRs are separated based upon their lengths. We have one VNTR made up of six repeats, and one VNTR made up of seven repeats. So this set of results informs us that individual A and individual B are unrelated, and it's obvious to see here that they don't share the same DNA. Now, individual A and B have a baby. We'll call the baby individual C. Let's take a look at the baby's VNTR at the same loci and see how this compares to the parents. Here we can see that baby has inherited the VNTR with six repeats from the mother, B, and has inherited the VNTR with five repeats from the father, A. 
When we run this sample through the gel, we can compare the banding pattern for the baby, individual C, with the parents, A and B. Now, it's clear to see that individual C, the baby, has unique DNA in comparison to both A and B. But what is also clear is that despite this individuality, baby has some VNTRs in common. Specifically, C shares the VNTR with five repeats with individual A and the VNTR with six repeats with individual B. This indicates that C is the offspring of individuals A and B, essentially providing the DNA evidence that A and B are this baby's parents. And this is, in a nutshell, how PCR, VNTRs and electrophoresis are used in paternity testing, specifically showing how VNTRs can be used to establish relatedness, i.e. in a paternity test where we would have a 50% match between the baby and the parent. Now, it is estimated that the odds of two random individuals sharing the same VNTR pattern is about 1 in 10 billion. And it is because of the variation and individuality of these VNTRs that they have been utilised as genetic fingerprints i.e. a DNA fingerprint. So it is important that you appreciate the significance of this, specifically that the probability of two individuals having the same DNA or genetic fingerprint is very low. This is due to the fact that the chances of two individuals having the same number of VNTRs at each specific loci on the allele or the DNA is very low. Now everyone is familiar with the use of fingerprints in forensic science, the notion that no two individuals share the same print. And this is true for an individual's genome. It is this principle that has led to DNA fingerprinting, also known as DNA profiling or DNA typing. So DNA fingerprinting uses PCR and VNTRs. VNTRs occur in lots of places within an organism's genome. The number of times a sequence is repeated and the region in the genome they are found, i.e. specific chromosomes and loci, is used to compare similarities and differences between individuals. And a major application of this is in forensic science. Let's imagine we have taken some blood, herm, saliva samples from a crime scene and we have a few suspects in custody. We can use PCR to amplify our DNA samples of interest, giving us more to work with, which is essential since there was a limited amount of DNA evidence at the crime scene. And we have our suspects, X, Y and Z, and our sample collected from the crime scene which we'll label F. From each of the suspects and our F sample, we have three pairs of homologous chromosomes, showing locus 1, 2 and 3. The VNTRs are amplified by a PCR and are then run through an electrophoretic gel. And here we have the VNTR banding pattern shown for suspect X, Y and Z and our sample F. As we can see, despite these individuals having several bands in common, their overall DNA profile, their fingerprint, is unique. In this case, individuals X and Z can be eliminated from any further investigation, whereas individual Y has an identical VNTR pattern to our crime scene sample, F. Thus, Y remains a clear suspect since this technique provides the DNA evidence required to place Y at the scene of the crime. So, as we have seen, VNTRs can be used to identify individuals by comparing the similarities and differences in their DNA, specifically these sequences of non-coding DNA. Whilst DNA fingerprinting is most commonly used in forensic analysis, the uses don't stop there. Other examples include PCR and VNTRs being utilised to study endangered species, for example in conservation projects and population genetics. Uh, comparisons of DNA can be utilised in human population studies, for example evaluating ethnic migration. Um, the techniques can be used to determine pedigree, i.e. breeds of horses or dogs or cattle, etc. And of course we have medical applications, genetic screening or the use in IVF and testing for specific genetic disorders or predisposition to a disease, which can also be used to inform appropriate selections for clinical trials. Alright, so we know what VNTRs are and we are aware of some of the applications. And if we have a sample we can use restriction enzymes to cut the specific sequence of interest, then we use PCR to amplify that sequence, and finally electrophoresis separates the VNTR by size. You know sequences vary, but the final thing you could be asked in an exam is to calculate how many nucleotides or base pairs a specific sequence has. Despite this being super easy, it can catch you out if you don't know what's what. For example, a two nucleotide sequence may appear four times on one chromosome. 
So 2 times 4 equals 8, which means this particular sequence has a total of 8 nucleotides or base pairs, which we can verify by writing them out in the 5 to the 3 direction. For example, GC, 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 GC. Let's say a sample of DNA has a sequence of 4 nucleotides, A, C, G, T, repeated 34 times. How many base pairs does that sequence contain? Easy, right? The number of base pairs in the sequence in question would be 4 multiplied by 34 to give 136 base pairs. And that, guys, brings us to the end of this revision lesson on DNA fingerprinting. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at electrophoresis. So hopefully you'll join me for that one. And until then, take it easy.